is shame on you politicians in the UK who did not want to call for a ceasefire. Shame on you people. You could have done this weeks ago. You could have done this over a month ago. You've shown your true colors. You've shown who you are. You've shown that you are just cowards. Since the genocide started after October 7th by the Israelis, the whole entire world has been calling for a ceasefire. Today, that ceasefire has been agreed. And here's everything that you need to know about it. If this is your first time here, or even if it's not, and you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button now. Let's get into it. So here are the terms of the ceasefire as agreed between the Israeli cabinet and Hamas. And I'm going to break down some of these and explain why they're actually quite strange. So I've taken this from Suleiman Ahmed on Twitter. And he writes, 50 Israeli hostages for 150 Palestinian women and children held as hostages by Israel. So one thing to note here is that these 150 women and children have been held way before October 7th. So for those people who are setting their morality clock on October 7th should know that hostages were taken from the Palestinian people in the form of women and children way before October 7th. So the 12,000 people that have been slaughtered, that people like Piers Morgan have been saying, well, this is just what they should have expected. The question is now, isn't this what Israel should have expected by taking this number of hostages? And let's not forget, these are only the number of hostages that have been released. We don't know exactly how many hostages, women and children, have been taken by Israel and are still Israeli captives. The ceasefire is going to last for four to five days. Okay, we'll come back to that. 300 trucks of humanitarian aid allowed into Gaza. Now, again, the fact that this is a point of negotiation is showing you that Israel is using food and water, food and water as a weapon. They have weaponized food and water. No one should need to beg or negotiate a ceasefire and one of those terms of the condition is let food come in. And we've seen that the Palestinian people have celebrated the fact that it was raining yesterday and they were drinking the rainwater, even though that is, believe it or not, illegal. So again, the first two terms of this, 150 Palestinian women and children who were taken as prisoners by Israel should be released for 50 Israeli hostages. So number one, why did they have these people in their captive anyway? These, I mean, say what you will about the women, right? Say what you will about adults. Why did they have children? Very strange. Then they are allowing food and water to come into Gaza now. Very strange. That should never have been stopped. The third is one additional day of ceasefire for every 10 hostages released. The fourth is that Israel will not fly drones for six hours a day. So that is six hours of day where there is some sort of respite in terms of the aerial bombardment that is happening. And the interesting thing would be to see if Israel even sticks to that. The last term is that there will be a 24-hour period following the release of the Palestinian names to allow for legal appeals. So does that mean that the Palestinians that are being freed from captive from the Israelis have 24 hours to lodge, a, lodge an appeal? I mean, what does this mean? That they need to somehow contact contact some lawyers and law firms in order to get their voices heard, in order to, <laughs> to do what? You got 24 hours to sue us, otherwise your terms are, you know, your, your, your captivity uh, means nothing. It doesn't really make sense. So... And the last and final term that I find extremely, extremely strange is that Israel will not allow, and this is one of the terms of the agreement, that Israel will not allow Palestinians back to northern Gaza. And there we have it. There we have the crux of why this all started, or at least we should say something that we all knew, which was that Israel wants to continue their expansion of their territory on Palestinian land. And this is a sign that they will 
just be taking northern Gaza. They'll expand their territory, and this will be a win for Benjamin Netanyahu with his people. So there we have it. The terms of the ceasefire, the final one, the strangest one, Palestinians are not allowed back into their homes in northern Gaza. What homes are left? Who knows? But wherever homes are left, people aren't allowed to return back. So is this a win? I don't think so. I just think a few people won't die for the next few days. That's it. And then after that, it all depends on whether or not Hamas want to release more prisoners or not, and whether Israel want to stick to these terms or not. And yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment below. For me personally, I think a ceasefire is it's it's a good thing, but this is not a solution. And one of the other things that I would just like to say is shame on you politicians in the UK who did not want to call for a ceasefire. Shame on you people. You could have done this weeks ago. You could have done this over a month ago. These pathetic terms that have been have been negotiated between Hamas, this evil organization that you keep saying in Israel, this angelic organization that you keep saying, that could have been you, but no, instead, you've shown your true colors, you've shown who you are, you've shown that you are just cowards. So we'll leave it at that. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, click subscribe right now.